Okay, so I did actually successfully rotate the motor. Um, it did have a tendency to want to kind of roll a little bit as I got it moving. Uh, it wasn't too bad though, it wasn't like it wanted to just flip on me. But uh, regardless, I do have it in position now, the position I wanted to be in where I can easily access the bearings. Uh, pull some plastic gauge up in there, see what we've got going on. So, I'm going to go ahead and get to that. Uh, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to spec all the bearings yet. I may just kind of take a look at everything, um, inspect everything while I'm in there. Obviously, I have a flashlight here so I can see what I'm doing. But uh, definitely, I want to take a good look. I can see my cam bearings from here, or the cam lobes anyways, so I can check those to make sure that I don't see any scorings from possibly a failed lifter anything like that. I can see my cylinder walls, which actually, like I said, this one here, I can still see the cross hatching in it from here. It looks pretty good. I don't see any ridges or anything like that. So I may just rotate the motor over a little bit. There's some cross hatching in this piston as well. Um, and as long as everything looks good, like I said, I'm going to put this thing back together and get it in that S10 over there. So I'm going to do the easiest bearings I can get to first. It looks like it's going to be this bearing and this bearing in the position that the engine is in. And I just kind of want to check all my raw bearings just to be certain as to what spec, you know, just make sure they're not spun or anything like that. Uh, the main bearings, I don't think that's going to be as big of a deal, but I may check those as well. I haven't really decided. I'm just going to start going through it and see what I find and uh, go from there. So like I said, I'm going to start with this bearing and this bearing. I'm going to go ahead and remove this bearing cap to start with because that's the easiest one to get to. Uh, that's a pretty easy process. You just uh, remove these two bolts here and then carefully remove the cap, exposing the bearing surface. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my bearing cap removed. The crank actually looks pretty good. I'm not 100% certain about this bearing surface though. It, to me, it doesn't look like the bearing surface itself is bad. Like I don't see any scoring actually in the metal, but if you look around the edges, it looks like it has a little bit of oil buildup towards either end. And it looks like, um, here, let me see if I can get that better for you so you can see. There we go, that's better. But you see what I mean? Like it doesn't look like the actual surface is damaged. It just looks like where that oil has stuck to some spots and not others. So I'm thinking this bearing's probably okay. Um, I'm just gonna check the specs on it. So according to the instructions that came with the plastic gauge, what you've gotta do is cut a length of the plastic gauge inside of the packaging the width of the bearing surface. So that's right about there is what that's going to be. So I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and cut that. Um, the instructions that came with this do not say anything about placing any oil on the surface, uh, but I did read somewhere on the internet <laughs> that said you put a little bit of uh, lubricant there just to kind of give it um, the ability to smush down and elongate as you retorque this bearing surface, or retorque the bearing cap, I should say. So what I think I'm going to do is just take a bit of assembly lube and just kind of stick it there, put the plastic gauge over that, and then torque that bad boy back down. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back into place, torque it back down, and then I'll show you the process of actually removing the bearing cap and reading the spec on the plastic gauge.
Okay, so now that you have retorked it down to the proper torque specifications, you take your little gauge that comes with the plastic gauge and you measure the thickness of the smushed down plastic that's there. And that's pretty close, but I don't know if that's quite there, so I'm going to grab the other packaging and see what we've got. That's very close to that. That's actually the largest that it goes, and it looks like it's 0 0.051 millimeters. So I'm going to check that with the specs online and uh, see if that is within spec or out of spec. Okay, so what I found online is I actually found a specification sheet. You probably cannot see that on my phone. Uh, but it says 0 0.023 to 0 0.065 millimeter is good for uh, production and 0 0.023 to 0 0.076 millimeters is a good service uh, bearing clearance. So I'm 0 0.051. I'm kind of right. I'm kind of at the upper end of the production service limit, but or the production clearance limit. But as far as the service clearance limit, I am kind of right in the middle. So I think actually these bearings are good. I only spec the one bearing, but uh, I may continue to do a couple more, check it out. Uh, but the fact that this one is okay would lead me to believe they're probably all okay, but I may just kind of go through them all, make sure I don't see any scoring on any of the bearing surfaces, and uh, just make sure everything looks right. But that's the process. So thank you for watching that. Um, good luck on trying this on any of your stuff. Uh, if you were watching when I torqued the bearing cap, just keep in mind also that what you had to do was put it down to 15 foot-pounds of torque and then rotate it an additional 75 degrees. Uh, without doing that, ex that extra rotation, um, you're not getting the proper torque and you need a proper torque in order to get a proper bearing clearance. So just keep that in mind. Uh, another thing you want to do is just kind of take this and wipe that off. They say that you can leave it, that it will uh, not cause any problems or anything on the motor, but I'm going to get that out of there before I put it back together just for a uh, peace of mind. And I'm going to put a little bit of assembly lube on there as well before I snap it back together. All right, uh, make sure you check out the rest of my channel. Make sure you follow me when I, uh, the process of putting this motor in the S10. And uh, thank you for watching.